Now we'll see the next point, the features to implement simple chats and the facilities to implement chatbots. To implement a simple chat, we have inverse loading, which is a grid property that allows you to view the latest information from the bottom up. Audio record, an external object that allows you to record an audio. Control value changing is an event that lets you know if the user has changed the value of an editable field, like a numeric or character. In this example, it can be used to count the characters of the message to be sent. And lastly, we have push notifications, which allow you to inform the user about some event by means of an alert. In this context, we inform that there is a new activity of interest. For now, we'll focus on push notifications and the implementation of the Socket API. Later on, we'll talk about the new features of version 16. Let's see an example in execution. In the Citizen application, users can subscribe to receive notifications of new activities. Afterwards, someone inserts a new activity from the web backend. And, after saving, the notification is sent to the subscribed users. The user receives the notification in his or her device and when tapping on it, he can see the detail of the new activity. So, how is this done? For this, we have the property notification provider at the web generator level, allowing us to choose the external provider with which we will handle the notifications. When you choose one provider or another, several properties will be displayed for its configuration. Previously, we used several external objects to handle notifications. Now, we unify them into a single API called Notification Provider, which can be found in the module Genexus Common Notifications. With this API, we can configure the notification using variables of SDT type and sending it from the web backend. Let's stop to analyze the SDT that will be used. The notification SDT allows configuring the content of the notification, as well as the action that will trigger some event, such as opening an SD panel sending parameters. Configuration allows you to indicate the name of the main SD object where the notification is executed in its application ID item. Delivery allows you to set the notification priority and expiration priority. Finally, there are some procedures to be able to send the notification, for example, send notification, which is in charge of sending the notification to the device with the configurations made. Within the notification itself, you can configure things like title, text, the event that was defined in the main SD object, and the one in charge of opening the activity detail once the user tapped on the notification. Next, we set the priority and expiration of the notification. And lastly, we'll configure the application ID, which is the name of the main object. Lastly, you must call the send notification procedure passing the variables that you configured and indicating the device that will receive this notification. In this example, the users that subscribed. Now let's move on to the following topic. Regarding the Socket API, note that it allows establishing a two-way communication between the client and server through WebSockets, which are communications protocol that provides a communication channel over a TCP connection. An example of a use of the Socket API is an assistance chat, 
which in this example allows the user to make a report in real time from his mobile and a wizard will support him from the web part. It works as follows. The SD client sends the message to the server. The server sends it to the web client. The web client will refresh its screen to show the new message and vice versa. For this, we have a server socket, which allows you to establish the communication from the server to the clients, sending a notification using some methods, such as Notify, allow sending a notification to the user who originated an action. Notify Client, this method allows you to send a notification to a specific user. Broadcast allows you to send notifications to all users. And Notify Client Text allows you to send plain text to a specific client. Notification Info allows you to specify the notification information that will be sent as Notification ID, the object that will receive that notification, and the message. In this example, we send a new message from the web chat, a web panel, to the user engaged in the conversation, a panel for smart devices. Note that the SDT comment notification info was created to send the message in JSON format. Subsequently, to receive the answer, you need to configure at the KB level the procedures that will handle the connection and the message received. Note that in this case, you have the procedure new message received. Finally, to show it, use the on message event in the web panel and make a refresh to load the new message that will be displayed. On the other hand, for the communication between the client and the server, there is a client socket, which has methods for establishing the connection to the web socket, and a method for sending a message. In addition, there are events which are executed when establishing the connection or not, and when receiving a message. Note that client socket is currently available only for smart device generators. Continuing with the example, from the mobile part, configure the delivery through the send method passing the variable of the new message. To receive messages, the message received event is used to then display them to the user. 